Welcome to the second part of A Renaissance of Colour, painting this time with natural mineral pigments in different binding mediums. Now, before I go into the details of which binding medium to use, which pigment with each different pigment, I would like to point out that the craft of painting takes forefront here. It's essential that you have a good knowledge of the materials that you're dealing with. Now, this starts, of course, with being able to stretch a piece of linen on a stretcher correctly. Um, unfortunately, uh, one can observe that over the past 40 years, the craft of painting has got lost to a large degree um, as conceptual art has taken over from painting. Now, painting requires skill, some basic skills. Now, I cannot deal with all those skills here, but I do point out in my book on how you actually stretch a piece of linen that will stay stretched for years and, and the paintings that will survive travel to exhibitions and uh, art fairs and so on. So now, with that said, I'm going to um, take a look at some of the water-based binding mediums, first of all, and then I will just show you how I apply the pigments in the different binding water-based binding mediums. After that, I will move on to the same pigments or similar pigments in oils and resins. Now, one of the main um, water-based binding mediums, of course, um, in history was something as simple as egg yolk and water, egg tempera. Um, there seems to be a lot of confusion about this when I see some of the videos on YouTube of what egg tempera actually is. It is just egg yolk with preferably um, a, a boiled water that's been left to go cold or um, actually any kind of water really. Um, I use also water from, from the tap. Um, distilled water you can use. So this is just then stirred together. You never add any vin vinegar to this. Sometimes I've seen people talk about keeping it fresh by adding vinegar. Vinegar will destroy some of the pigments, um, as I found out with Lapis Lazuli years ago. So there, now, Egg tempera, again, cannot be used with every pigment. For instance, if you mix realgar and orpiment, both arsenic sulfides, with egg tempera, you will have an alchemical reaction. It really looks like you're the alchemist. Everything will start to bubble and give off a terrible smell of sulfur dioxide as the sulfur in the egg yolk reacts with the sulfur in the pigment. I, uh, it was a shock when, when this first happened. Um, and and uh, also you cannot use egg tempera with um, lapis lazuli and azurite. The oil in the egg does, does discolor the blue colors. You can use egg tempera wonderfully with the earth pigments, yellow ochres and browns. Now, of course, one of my favorite uh, binding mediums is casein. Casein is from the curds of milk. You can buy it ready-made um, from, from Kramer. This, this is a, the German product from Schmincke, an excellent casein. Um, I make it myself. Um, here I use casein powder. You leave this standing overnight in, in water and the next day 
you uh, heat it up and put borax in and it turns the, the uh, sort of chemical reaction takes place and it turns into a fantastic binding medium. Um, I'm not uh, going to make that here today, but it, all the recipes are in my book. The other main water-based binding medium is your um, rabbit skin glue. So here's Bugs Bunny in powder form. Um, and you have a variety of hide glues, which are very, very powerful. This is uh, one hide glue that is used in the Japanese Nihonga tradition. Uh, the Nihong Nihonga tradition is uh, one in which you have this hide glue and a variety, a huge variety of mineral pigments. Then there's also a high quality uh, rabbit skin glue in plates. This, of course, you leave soaking overnight and uh, the next day you warm it up and it dissolves in the water. Now, my personal choice for binding mediums is that I make my own mixture of casein and rabbit skin glue. The important thing is it should not be too strong. Again, I have the recipes in my book, but this is probably the most flexible binding medium possible because you can use it with every pigment. There will be no chemical reactions. The pigments will not change. Um, I will deal with um, some of the things that you, you have to do with Rialgar and Orpiment um, that have to be protected from the atmosphere, even in a water-based binding medium. So now um, that is, I think, basically everything I need to say now. So in the next part, I'm going to actually show you how I work with the water-based binding mediums. So now, uh, here's the fun part where I actually get around to, to using the pigments and binding medium. Now, here you can see there's a beautiful malachite. I just add a little bit of binding medium, not too much, and just then mix the pigment in this. Now, one of the really nice aspects, of course, working with water-based binding medium is if you've made too much, you just add water, let the pigment settle out, pour the water off, and then you can use the pigment again another time. So here, I'm just going to very freely start layering some of this malachite over the azurite. And as it dries, this is now a larger particle size than the previous malachite. And even though this is a water-based binding medium, it's still quite translucent. So I'm just adding some more touches. Of, of course, when I'm working on, this is just a little study for one of the cherry blossom paintings, just basically having some fun with the pigments. Now, I'll just take uh, another small work that I'm playing around with. This one is, I'm working on an idea of Medusa, and, and so I'm just doing some very free, spontaneous, uh, small works with, with Perseus uh, and, and his uh, sword and poor old Medusa looking clueless. So here I'm just adding a bit more colour here, as you can see, it's just, you can work very, very freely. 
and I will build up the layers of color and, and, and get some very, very interesting uh, surface things happening. So it's just a matter of not having your paint too thick And voila, you can work like this. Now I'm going to um, just add another, another color here, but this time this is uh, a burgundy earth, a red earth, and I'm just going to add a little bit of the egg yolk. And again, you see that this earth pigment is very, very different. It becomes very thick, very, very quickly. So one has to be careful not to have it too thick, too pasty. So I add a little bit more. There we are, now it's becoming sort of thinner and and here i'm i'm just going to to do a few touches to to perseus that i i, I want to bring out a certain quality with him i will also just uh, let me put that brush there i just want to now use a little bit of my casein rabbit skin glue and with, with this brush, nice thin brush, I just want to, to let that run in. And so th this figure, it, it, and as, as I said, these are little spontaneous studies that I, I enjoy doing, uh, working out a new idea that will eventually maybe become one of the large panels. Now, um, just let me just get my, uh, oh, here's the lapis lazuli and now here with her dress of course i have to use the casein and rabbit skin glue let me find another another brush uh, this will be fine now in the previous video i showed you lapis lazuli um, in the resin and oil now with with this this is just in the casein rapid rapid skin glue mixture this takes a little bit more time and patience to to mix thoroughly into your binding medium as you can see each paint each paint has very, very different qualities, even in the same binding mediums. Uh, this is perhaps some, th this will be something new to anyone working with, with the mineral pigments. As your experience builds up, it, it, it really becomes no, no problem. Now here, I'm just going to layer another sort of lapis lazuli on her her dress and you can see it's it's becoming now a richer color and I don't need a huge amount of pigment for 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 such a work so Now, okay, now I think um, at this point, the important thing here too now, I've got a little bit left 
And what I will do is just add water to that, wash the brush out in it, because I don't want to lose any pigment at all. And, uh, and then another day or later on in the day, um, I can return to this and, and work on this a little bit more. So, okay, this is now, um, I, I want to now show you a, a larger work on paper. So um, I will just get that and get some more pigment. So now this is a, a slightly larger uh, work on paper that I just started a bit yesterday. Now, um, I just want to show you here how free you can be with larger areas of color. So first of all, I'm just going to, to do a little bit here with the azurite and take a fairly large brush here. And there you can see. And then here, I'm just using quite a, a weak solution. I just play around with, with, with the color. Move that out of the way. And this is now already the, the second layer of azurite. So it, it's going to become much richer. And this is the important aspect of working with the mineral pigments. This is layering. And this is where you need to understand what is happening with your layers as you go from small to large pigment particle size. That's also a very important point. Now, I'm, I'm just going to show you with a little bit of cinnabar. And um, again, I shall just add a little bit of binder to, to get it going. And this, this one is a sort of medium particle size, an orange, orange red that goes to very dark red with increased particle size. Now, this pigment is, can be very opaque. Um, here I'm just going to control it with a reasonable amount of binding medium, so it's a little bit more watery. And uh, I, th I think in, in, in this right now, I'm going to just perhaps play around a little bit with, with this background here between what will be figures. And um, this is a rag paper that I just wanted to experiment with. It's got a, uh, a nice texture. So, and at this, this stage, of course, the, the painting will will be very free, it can remain free, it, it, it will depend on how th this image develops. It's part of my uh, idea with Medusa. And of course, with, with these temples, maybe I put that a little bit of red there. And then just want to use up a little bit of this earth, burgundy earth, red earth. As you can see, this pig pigment's already settled quite thickly at the bottom. So here I want to bring in these columns of the, what will be a temple. The temple of Athena. And I just want to mark out the figure of Poseidon, who's attacking Medusa as he comes out of the sea. Uh, 
and then little by little the, the image will develop. I can make changes as I go along. So this just gives you um, an overview of some of the possibilities with water-based binding mediums. Um, I um, just want to show you uh, briefly then some of the little finished works. So uh, now I just want to show uh, a few small works. Um, some were preparation for larger works and others sometimes are just individual ideas, spontaneous ideas. This first one is a modern Narcissus. Um, last year I worked on a large triptych with Echo and Narcissus and this was one of the ideas. I actually didn't use this idea in the painting. But uh, what I enjoyed about this was then putting large particle malachite here over large particle azurite and playing around with different particle sizes. Here, a very large particle cinnabar, just strokes of it to bring out the whole chromatic complexity of the idea. Now, um, another work it doesn't have any particular uh, meaning. It's just called a hair, a unicorn, and a maiden in chains. Um, I, I don't know how this happened, but uh, this was then, I used quite a lot of large particle lapis lazuli at the end. I just wanted to see uh, from my last production or the production of lapis lazuli just how, how it was in a water-based binding medium. And here I have a stroke of Rielgar just uh, to really bring out the quality of the blue. Um, two works that I have that were related to my Dante Divine Comedy. And uh, th these figures are in purgatory. And this figure is uh, running around uh, the mountain in eternity. And uh, for me, th this was uh, an exercise using large particle cinnabar and rielgar. You can see this, th this is incredibly large particle. I had to use fairly strong casein rabbit skin glue uh, binding medium for it to, to hold on the paper. It, it's very gritty, this, uh, this, this particular color, but uh, for me, it, it has then uh, an amazing quality against this lower quality uh, lapis lazuli. I didn't want it to be too strong with that figure. And then also from uh, Purgatory in Dante's Divine Comedy, this, uh, these figures I actually used in the paintings. Um, this poor fellow was getting beheaded and uh, that seems to have gone on since Dante's time right up until now. But for me, again, uh, I just wanted a, a complex dark area. You know, darkness doesn't have to be boring. And, and here I've got all sorts of colors that just built up and created a darkness of its own, a multicolored sort of darkness and then the figures are in different ochres and some lead tin yellow to, to bring out the, the highlights of the figure. And, and here um, the sword is, is, is a stroke of stibnite. Um, that, that's a, a beautiful silver grey and fairly large particle. And finally, just this other, I have numerous studies. I could go on for hours showing the numerous studies. This one uh, was an earlier one, Jacob wrestling with an angel. I quite like that story in the Old Testament. And uh, Delacroix uh, did a painting, and I always felt the challenge to take on Delacroix and do my own Jacob wrestling with an angel. And then again, a sort of night scene of, of darkness, but with large particle, um, again, large particle cinnabar and large particle azurite, which then really sparkle in, in daylight. 
So that uh, completes this section now with water-based binding mediums. Okay, now for the final part of the presentation, I'm going to show you, uh, show you how I work with different uh, earth pigments here in different binding mediums. Now, I'm going to take some of my own um, produced yellow ochre, just a, a little bit, and uh, with this, I'm going to, to mix it with um, a linseed oil and literally you just need a couple of drops of oil. and. This becomes a paste, okay, you can see. Now I'm just going to add one little drop of a diluent. Remember my diluent is 20% uh, fir balsam resin to 80% pure spirits of turpentine. And then I will just take one of my little mullers. If I, sometimes this is not necessary, but uh, I just want to make sure that, that the binding medium is dispersed evenly with the pigment. Okay. And then uh, let's put this here. And then I will just take, one could use any, any kind of brush here. I will just dip this in the diluent and now I'm just building, building up the, the layers and you'll see if, if I put some over here, it's still very, it can be very translucent. This is one of the, the beauties of making your own yellow ochre. Uh, often uh, when I used regular tube oil paint, it was not really one of my favorite colors. But, but here, layering, just building up also particle size. This is slightly larger. And even if I were, uh, I will probably leave this as, as a, a lead tin yellow, but just to show you what happens when, when you put that over, because it's in lin linseed oil, I can wipe it off later if I don't, don't want that. But you can see a yellow ochre over a lead tin yellow gives you an incredibly warm yellow. Again, I will bring some more in here. This is my Central Park Venus number six. So uh, if someone were like this in Central Park, you would get arrested in this country. So it's more of a fantasy. Okay, and, and again, and, and this will become then a very rich uh, yellow ochre in, in this background area. Now, I want to next take, um, I'll take, let me think now for this, I'll take a bohemian green earth, yeah, uh, no actually I will take uh, the Verona green earth, there's different particle sizes. This one I, I uh, just simply bought from, from Kramer Pigments, so let me just wipe that off and I'll just take, again, a small amount. 
this, this has um, uh, a pigment particle size uh, up to 80 microns. So uh, if you wanted to, you could levigate and separate the, the different particle sizes. Um, here, I'm not doing that because I want to use here now with a larger particle size of a green earth, I want to use my fur balsam resin binder And you can see immediately how it becomes a very dark green. In a water-based binding medium, it will stay about the same as your, your powdered pigment. So here I'm just mixing this. And into that, I will just put a touch of walnut oil. And this already, I don't need really to mold, mold this. This is, uh, as you can see, each pigment just behaves so differently. Um, it, it does take some time just to get used to these differences because when you buy your tube oil paint, everything has sort of been turned into the same sort of quality. Okay, so now I'll dip my brush in the diluent and just apply now some of this. It's quite a, a, a sort of translucent color, but eventually, as you can see, these greens are quite earthy and they're building up. And sometimes I have malachite underneath and so, in many ways, I'm, I'm just playing around with this background to, to create a depth of color. You see, I think you can perhaps see how that's just slowly changing. Right, so now I want to take um, this uh, Spanish red ochre, um, which I, I simply bought from, from Kramer Pigments here in Manhattan. And I'll just take a small amount to show you uh, this difference. Again, uh, with this pigment, I'm going to just use linseed oil. Again, literally, I'll just try with one drop. I mean, this is how, how easy to oil paint can be. Um, somehow the oil paint industry has made it sound, just one more drop, has made it sound like it's um, very, very difficult uh, to, to paint with oil. But here you can see the linseed oil mixes very nicely with, with this earth pigment. This is one of the qualities that you find with natural earths is it's very, very easy to make a, a beautiful, a beautiful color. Now I'll take another, let's just take another one of these brushes. So I'll dip the brush again in my diluent. And you, you notice I, I don't need lots of binding medium. Um, to, to make a paint. So now I'm making this sort of thinnish so that again I have this sort of translucent quality and I, I just want to start bringing out some of these and with, with, with these sort of lines which are kind of trees And, and there you can see just over this little bit of a pink area. I don't know if this will come out, but you, you can create then 
all sorts of beautiful nuances. Because natural earths, when, when you uh, prepare them, you can prepare them in different binding mediums. It doesn't, all, it doesn't just have to be linseed oil. And you see, if I bring this over, perhaps even, even over this white up here, see what happens. Okay, so this uh, just gives you an, an idea. Uh, I'll just use a little bit of this, this up, bit up. Perhaps over here. And as you can see, that this 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 area uh, behind the figure, my sort of chromatic nude, as I, I call them, um, it, it will become really alive and, and not just a sort of boring landscape background or something and then then of course the reflection in in the in the water in the lake okay so that um, finishes this part and now i'm going to show you uh, malachite on on another painting okay so now i'm going to um, use the same malachite that I used in the water-based binding mediums earlier. And this time I'm, I'm going to put now the next layer of malachite on this. Um, I, I change this line, so I use the lead white to block out certain things. And then I, I um, have now two layers of malachite. I'm going to now put the next layer on. This is still quite a fine pigment particle size. Now, with this, I have to use the fur balsam resin. There, there's no other choice. Otherwise, the malachite in oil will, will discolor and turn brown within about five years. And it's, it's not a very nice brown. So here I'm just making, first of all, this paste with, with the resin. I may need just a tiny, tiny spot more. And to this I will add a drop of walnut to help the paste. That's just about right there. I will just use a, a small, well, one of my mullers and just mull this to make sure that ev everything is We just let the weight of the muller do the job. You don't have to do much and then you can feel it's already st sticking to the slab. Just scrape that paint off. So now I've got quite a nice paste and then again Now, here, I think you can see that I'm starting to, to cover. Now, I've, in, in this case, I've been using the same particle size, and although it's a pigment of low refractive index, which means it's quite translucent, little by little, this is becoming denser. So here, and you can see how this is covering very nicely. Now, what I will do, of course, I want to bring some of this structure down here, which I will paint over this area later on. And then 
if I still want to have this particular green, then I will use the next particle size on top of this. And, and then I will have this depth of color that is one of the most fascinating aspects of working with these pigments because the, the huge range of particle size which you can control or if you buy the pigments um, from Kramer you can always levigate them yourself into different particle sizes should you wish. So you, you have got really a huge range of possibilities that for me make um, the possibility of, of paint on canvas or paint on paper, um, it, it gives it a, a, another unbelievable quality. Again here, I'm just going to, I've almost run out of paint now, but I will be also doing the same here where I've made changes to the painting. And then um, I will see if I like this green like this, or if I want a warmer green, then I, I may layer uh, or bring a green earth into or on top of this. These things just develop as, as you're working and you see different things that you want to change. So I think right now then that concludes uh, what I wanted to show in terms of working with the pigments in water-based binding mediums and uh, resin and oil binders. And it, of course you saw in the uh, previous uh, example where I worked with the lapis lazuli uh, in this area and eventually this, this tree will have some leaves on it. So the, the painting is undergoing quite a few, quite a few changes still. Uh, as it develops. So I hope that uh, uh, helps so, uh, people out of some of the confusion or questions that they may have uh, of working with, with these pigments.